All right, we are going to go over your six weeks review. So number one here, this would be a rotation. If I want to take the letter D to a capital letter P, I would just turn that letter and a turn is a rotation. Number two, this is wanting us to rotate something 90 degrees clockwise. And if I want to rotate something 90 degrees clockwise, we do have a rule for that. And the rule is that whatever the original ordered pair was, x, y, that it will become y opposite of x. So that's what I'm going to do to all three of these ordered pairs. So this is the new transformation. A was the ordered pair 2, 3. So first I want the y, which is 3. And then I want the opposite of x, so the opposite of 2 is negative 2. And then I do the same thing for b and c. So whatever the ordered pair is, it becomes the y-coordinate opposite of x. y-coordinate opposite of x. And if I graph it, that's what it would look like. And that is a 90 degree clockwise rotation. Okay. Number three. If we have two lines that are parallel and they're cut by a transversal, our alternate interior, our alternate exterior, and our corresponding angles, those are congruent. But our interior angles and exterior angles that are on the same side of the transversal, those are supplementary. Same side, supplementary. Same side, supplementary. So that's what happens whenever we have two parallel lines that are cut by a transversal. Okay, number four. It told us that this was an isosceles triangle. Let me unzoom this just a little bit. It's really big here. We're told this is an isosceles triangle with segment PQ being congruent to segment RQ. So I just set those two sides equal. I solve for my X. And then it wanted to know the length of PR. So if I want to know the length of PR, I just take my X value and I plug it in to the X of the segment PR. And I get 11. How are we looking so far? Looking good? OK, number five. Had a whole bunch of angles to find. I love this kind of problem. I think this problem is super easy. So these are vertical angles, 7 and 5. Those are vertical angles, so I know that those two are congruent. I know that right here we have a straight line, so I know that these two angles add to be 180. So if this one's 115, that's how angle 7 65. So these two angles are a linear pair, they're supplementary. And so once I know that's 65, I know this is 65. And then we can start working with, once you have a triangle, your three angles inside your triangle have to add to be 180. So if I add the 65 and 30 and take it away from 180, that gets me my 85. When I focus in on this triangle, I know that if I add the 65 and 70 and take it away from 180, I get the 45. And then these two are vertical, so they're going to equal. And then I know these two are vertical, so they're going to equal. And then over here I have a triangle. So if I add these two and subtract from 180, I'll get my 85. And then angle 4, I know that angle 3 and angle 4, that those are supplementary. They make a linear pair. It's 180 degrees from here to here. So, not too bad, pretty easy. Okay, this next one, we want to know the measure of angle A. And so I know anytime I have three angles in a triangle, that those three angles, that they add together to equal 180. I combine like terms and I solve the equation and I get X is 12. And if I want to know the measure of angle A, I just take 12 and plug it in that X and that makes a 38 degree angle. Okay, number seven.
they give us a triangle. They say two of the angles are 70 and 55. And what kind of triangle is it? So I know if the three angles have to add to be 180, I add the 70 and 55 together. I take the 125 that I get and take it away from 180, so that means the other angle is 55. So remember, if two angles are congruent, the sides across from them are congruent. So the side across from this one ch -ch -ch -ch, is congruent to the side across from this one. Ch -ch -ch -ch. And if two sides are congruent, then we have ourselves an isosceles triangle. So just remember your three angles add to be 180, add the two they give you, take away from 180, and then you've got it. Okay, number eight says altitude AD is also the median. So we need to talk about these two words. If something is an altitude, it forms 90 degree angles with the base. And if something's a median, then it's going to cut that base in half. So these two pieces equal. And when it wants to know what kind of a triangle this is, well, if we ever have a segment that forms 90 degree angles with the base and cuts the base in half, then that segment is a perpendicular bisector. And if this segment's a perpendicular bisector, then I know that this point is equidistant from here and this point is equidistant from here. So that means that these two sides are congruent, which is why we have ourselves an isosceles triangle. So an altitude forms 90 degree angles, a median cuts the base in half, and together that completely describes what a perpendicular bisector does. It forms a 90 degree angles, it cuts it in half, and so this is an isosceles triangle. Okay, number nine, going through this, they give us three angles of a triangle. So once again, I know if I have three angles of a triangle that those three angles will add to be 180. I combine like terms, I solve for x, and for me, I sometimes need to draw a picture when I see a problem like this. So I'm just going to do that real quick. And I don't really care what the picture looks like, just so I have it. So once I get my x is 10, I just plug the 10 into all these x's. So 10 plus 30 makes one angle 40. If I plug 10 into this x here, 4 times 10 is 40, plus 30 is 70, so I know one of my angles is 70. And then if I plug the 10 into this x, 10 times 10 is 100, minus 30 is 70. And so I know that if I have two angles congruent, that the sides across from them are congruent. So this side ch -ch 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 -ch, is congruent to the side across from this one. Ch -ch 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 -ch. So we have ourselves an isosceles triangle. Okay, number 10 says the altitude from point A of the triangle formed by points A, B, and C intersects B, C at point D. And it says which of the following is true. Well, I know that since this is an altitude, that it forms 90 degree angles with the base. And if these are 90 degree angles, that means that line segment AD is perpendicular to line segment BC. Because the definition of, of perpendicular means two lines that intersect and form 90 degree angles. And that's exactly what happened here. We had two lines that intersected, they make 90 degree angles, and that's what the definition of altitude is. Altitude represents the height of a shape, and the altitude is always perpendicular to the base. Okay, moving on. Number 11 has to do with our tessellations that we played around with earlier in the year when we had our little pieces and we tried to put them together to see if they would tessellate. And remember, the pentagon is the one that doesn't tessellate. And if you will remember that all of these angles, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, that those all add to be 360. This one, this one, this one, this one, these add to be 360. 
these three angles all add to be 360. So I know that something will tessellate if all of these interior angles add to be 360, which is what B is saying. A proof that only interior angles with degree measures that are factors of 360. These have to be factors of 360 in order for all of them to add up to be 360. So that is B. Okay, number 12. Number 12 is very lengthy. <laughs> so let's look at this for a second. They give us all kinds of things, all kinds of things to look at, all kinds of things to read. And so you just have to take your time and you kind of have to read through it. But we are trying to figure out what the reason is for number six. So let's just look at number six and see what it says. But you really do kind of want to read the whole given and follow the proof along as it goes. See what's happening, see what's going on. But let's just cut to the chase and look at number six. Number six says the measure of angle CIH, CIH, that's this angle right here, plus the measure of angle CHI, that's this angle right here, plus the measure of angle ICH, ICH, that's this angle right here, that those three angles add to be 180. Well, why do you think we know that those three angles add to be 180? It's because they're in a triangle. So the reason that says that is D. The sum of your interior angles of a triangle equal 180. So that's what happens every time we have a triangle. Okay, number 13, moving on. He wants to know what kind of angles do we have here? Are they congruent and why? So angle three and angle four, these two form a straight line. So those are a linear pair. They're not congruent, they're supplementary. They always add to be 180. Angle one and angle two, those are corresponding angles, but the reason they're not congruent is because line L is not parallel to line M. In order for corresponding angles to be congruent, these two lines, L and M, have to be parallel. And because they're not parallel, that's why they're not congruent. Angle four and angle five, those are alternate interior angles, and they are not congruent either because lines L and M are not parallel, which is what this is saying over here. So you have to have parallel lines before your alternate interior are congruent, before your corresponding are congruent, before your same side interiors are supplementary. But because we don't have parallel lines, then they are not congruent. Okay, let's see what we have next, number 14. Sorry, I have a lot of papers here in front of me. So number 14 gives us a triangle. I know that these two angles are a linear pair, so they add to be 180. So if that's 130, this one's 50. Same thing here. If that's 130, then this one's 50. And then when I zero in on my triangle, I know my three angles have to add to be 180. So if I add the 50 and 50, that's 100. And so this one has to be 80. And then it just wants to know what kind of um, triangle is this and it is an isosceles triangle because once again these two base angles are congruent so the sides across from them would be congruent. Okay, 15. The measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the measure of its two remote interior angles. Let me just draw you a picture and explain in case you forgot. <clears throat> this exterior angle right here equals not the one next to it, but these two interior angles added up. So let's say that this one's 80. Let's say that this one's 40. So how much would angle X be? Angle X would be 120 degrees. 
So your exterior angle equals the sum of these two remote interior angles added up. Not the one next to it, but the other two. Okay, 16. I do have two sets of parallel lines here. Line M and N are parallel. Lines AC and BD are parallel. And what did they start off with? They started off with angle 1 is 122 degrees. So I know that these two should add to be 180 because they're a linear pair. I know that these are alternate interior angles, so they're congruent. These two are alternate interior angles because they're congruent. If I turn my paper, I know that this angle right here and this angle right here are corresponding angles and corresponding angles are congruent, so if that's 58, so is this one. Then I'm just going to turn my paper back this way. And then I know that these two are congruent because they're alternate interior angles. I know these two are congruent because they're alternate interior angles. And once again, I know that because of my straight line here, that these two should add to be 180. Number 17, it says that it's a right triangle. And then it gives me angle B is the right angle, and it gives me the measure of angle C and the measure of angle A. So these two angles add to be 90 if this one's the other 90. And when I solve that, I get X is 10. And in order to figure out the angles, I just plug 10 into both of these X's, and I get 57 and 33 degrees. Now some of you might have set up the equation this angle plus this angle plus this angle equals 180, which is fine. Or if this one's 90, these two have to add to be the other 90. So that's where that equation came from. So you do have two choices. Either all three angles add to be 180, or because this one's 90, these other two add to be 90. Combine like terms, solve for x. Once you get x, plug it back in, and you'll have your answer. Okay, number 18. This wanted us to use our distance formula and the slope formula in order to figure out what kind of a triangle we have here. So, just going through this, talking about slope, the slope of AB is zero because that's a parallel line. I'm sorry, because that's a horizontal line. Sorry. Um, the slope of line BC is undefined because that's a vertical line. And so anytime you have a vertical and a horizontal line, then I know that those are perpendicular. So I know that AB is perpendicular to BC, which means this is a 90 degree angle right here. That happens every time that we have a vertical and a horizontal line come together. They're perpendicular. So I know right now that I have a right triangle. Um, if these weren't vertical and horizontal and the slopes were opposite reciprocals, then that's another way to know that things are perpendicular. So if I had one that had a slope of, say, two-thirds, and the other one had a slope of negative three-halves, since these are opposite reciprocals, then those would make perpendicular lines also. And if you have perpendicular lines, then that means you've got a right triangle because a 90-degree angle gets formed. Now, if I find the length of these, the length of AB is 1, 2. I can just count it. The length of BC is 1, 2, 3, 4, if you drew in all of your little tick marks. But for a diagonal length, then I need to use my distance formula. And so that's what this is showing right here. So I was finding the distance between A and C. So I subtract my x's, 3 minus 1, close it, square it, plus I subtract my y's, 5 minus 1, close it, square it, and when I work that out, I get the square root of 20. So you can see that none of my sides are the same length, which means it's what kind of triangle if none of the sides are the same length? It's a scalene triangle. But that's not one of our choices. So I know that it is a right triangle because vertical and horizontal always make perpendicular. Okay, I am going to stop right here and I will record the other video at another time and I'll show you the rest 19 through the end. Thank you!